Hello, everyone. I pray everyone is having a blessed day and that their week has uh, started off blessed and prosperous. And I, I just I just want to speak to y'all today about some things that God has put on my heart. First and foremost, do not get ahead of God. Trust him in everything that you're doing. Like, I know... Sometimes it might be frustrating for you because you're wanting to see something. You're wanting to hear something. You, you, you're looking for something. You're looking for answers. And God said he has all the answers that you need. You have to trust him. No matter what it looked like, he is working. Even when it looks like he's not working, he is working. God is our provider. He's our way maker. He's our restorer. He's our redeemer. He's our deliverer. He's everything we need when we need him. God is the same God that he has been since day one when he spoke the word the, of the world into existence. When he created Adam and Eve, the first union, that is still the same God that we serve. The same God that says he hates divorce. The same God that said what he joined together, let no man separate. He is still him. He'll be the same as he was in the beginning, yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed. We're the ones who are changing. We're the ones who are not listening. He wants us to heed to his voice and heed to the Holy Spirit, to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and be patient and know that he is God and there is nothing impossible for him. He is the God of the impossible. So what may look like it is impossible for man is not impossible for God. You got to realize that God is working with self man free will because at the end of the day we all have free will. So how does he 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 work and get our spouses to change? He works in their heart. He works in their heart to change the nature of them. So it's a process. So it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a couple of days. It's not going to happen in a couple of months. And especially depending on where your spouse is in his relationship with God. Because if your spouse relationship was non-existent, it's going to take a little longer for God to, to, to get that heart softened. Okay? So be patient and know God is working. Like, he is fighting for you. He is definitely fighting for you. Like, the best thing you can do while you are waiting on God to restore, renew, revive your marriage and return your spouse home to you is to be patient. Pray for your spouse's salvation. Pray for their heart. Like, those are the things that you want to pray for. Don't be so focused on your marriage being fixed that you don't even pray for the things that they really need most. And that's the salvation of God, to come to the salvation of God. It's so much evil in this world. And we want our spouses to be protected so they can return home to us. And the way to do that is through through prayer. You have to cover them daily in the blood of Jesus. Just like you cover your home, your children, yourself and you cover that marriage as well but don't make your whole focus on your spouse make sure that you are focusing on your relationship with God and and encouraging that relationship with God and your spouse by praying for them praying God sends laborers across their fast paths to be a minister to them to, uh, so that they can receive the word of God. That's what you. That's what you want from them. That's. The, I mean. That's. That's really what you want. You. Um, you don't want. You don't want the same situation coming back to you. You don't want an unfinished job. And yeah, I get it. Some of y'all spouses might reach out to y'all, and and then you think that, oh, it's time. Okay, because they reached out. But before you move. Pray about it. Before you speak, pray about it. And if God don't answer you right away, hold still. Hold still. Because he's being still because he is God. And there's a reason for it. Don't get ahead of God. 
Let him work it for your good. Trust him. Trust in him no matter what it look like. He will never fail you. It's in his time and not ours. And don't don't be impatient. Because you don't want a false start. I I, I see I see so many people talking about false starts, false starts where their spouses had came on and then went back home or went back to the, the other person that they had been with. You don't want any of that. You when God figures it's gonna be for our good. You want your marriage to be renewed on a solid foundation of him and who he is. That's what you want. God said he will fight our battles for us. Let him do it. Just pray and trust him. He's doing it. Regardless if it, if it doesn't look like it in the natural, it's already done in the supernatural. God knows our beginning, our middle, and our end. He knows every day that we're going to wake and every day we're going to go to sleep. And, and he knows what is good for you. He knows what is good for your spouse. And we have to trust him. We have to trust him like we would trust our, our natural father. Or if it was your mother, that's the way you want to trust him. Because he's not going to fit. We are his children. He wants to give us his heart desire. He did not create us to suffer. He said the weapons will form, but they will the, the weapons uh, will prosper against us. But he never he he never said that they wouldn't form, but he said they wouldn't prosper. So trust him no matter what. He is working all things together for your good, for your marriage good, for your spouse's good, for your children good. Because you don't want to keep on going through the same thing over and over again. It's hurt that you have to heal from. It's hurt that your spouses have to heal from. Like I was listening to a man uh, the other day and when he, he and it clicked in my head, he was like, childhood hurt contributes to marriage destruction. So things that are unresolved in your life, growing up as a kid, as a child, it can have an effect on your marriage if you don't allow God to heal it. So now is your place to, to allow God to, now is your time to allow God to heal you, to work in you, to renew you, renew your heart, your mind, and your spirit in him. And also for you to pray the same things for your spouse. And just like you felt like you hit rock bottom, it might take for your spouse to hit rock bottom before he will, he, he will receive God. Sometimes. They got to go through things. Job had to go through things and he went through way more than what we're going through. So when you look at what you're going through, go read, go read Job. He, he was one of God's most faithful and humble servant. And the enemy stripped him of everything, but he couldn't take his, take his life. So, when I get to thinking negative, I cast that stuff down because I know it ain't from God. And I don't let nobody plant no seed in my head. Like, no, you can't talk to me negatively about what I'm standing for. You can't talk negatively to me about my spouse. I'm not going to do it. I'm not about to entertain that conversation with you. We're just going to end this conversation and we're going to talk about something else. And that's the best that I can do. And that's just... Being honest and upfront. Because here's the thing. Nobody has no place in your marriage but God. Nobody has no place in your marriage but God. His only thoughts are the only thoughts that should matter to you. What anybody else think, you should care less. It shouldn't matter. So um, what I'm going to uh, go over today is just really... What he was showing me, like, um, what I have been going over is pretty much God and how he deals with our enemies. So I'm going to go to um, 2 Samuel 22, 18. That's going to be the first one. 
it's getting dark, so hold on. Man, go ahead. So in 2 Samuel twenty two eighteen, 18, he said, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. And that's the King the uh, King James Version. And then he said, in uh, the Amplified Version, he said, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. So that's just like God telling you, like, no matter how strong the enemy may seem in your marriage, God is greater. God is stronger. He's working it all for your good. And so let me go to Psalms. He, God just had to like remind me like when, when stuff just like, I just been having a lot going on with attacks on my job. Like, and I'm like, God, whatever breakthrough is about to happen. Come on with it. Cause I'm like, I don't, I'm up here dodging, dodging, dodging. Like I have people constantly trying to uh, get at me at work, but I'm like, Hey bro, I'm not about to get in the fences with you. I'm not about to be offended by anything you do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to apologize for the miscommunications or the misinterpretations, whatever I got to do to, to keep from having an offense in my heart because I need God to move in my life. And that's where I'm at right now. Like, I don't, you, you can't, you can't, you can't, bruh, you can't even, sis, you can't even get me to go there. The enemy can't use it. He tried it. He failed. Okay. So, sign 6 9. The Lord has heard my supplications. The Lord will receive my prayer. So, he's saying, like, the Lord, he, he, God is going to receive our prayers. He, he hears them. And then it says the same thing in the Amplified Version. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord receives my prayers. So a lot of people think that God is not hearing them. He receives your prayer. He hears them. He, he is not deaf to your, to your prayers. Now, the thing is, if you feel like God is not moving or you're not seeing anything from God, you um you need to check your heart. Check your heart. And what's in your heart? Because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Remember that. Make sure your heart is pure and walking in love. So I got a Psalms 3. Who my enemies are turned back. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. So when God, this is this is the thing. When God turns the enemy away from us, they will perish. They won't be able to interfere in our marriage no more because God fixed it. When he do it, he does it perfectly. We, when we try to do it, we make a mess of ourselves. Like, look, look, don't do that. He says he, um, so, and then, um, in, in nine, let's see, let me go to the, the upper five. Well, it's going to say the same. So then I go down to, to Psalms nine, the Lord. Also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. So he's he's our, our refuge uh, for times when we're in trouble. So we just have to rest in him, like rest in him, trust him, knowing that he is working all things uh, together for our good. And so we're going to go on over to um, 81. And so, like, you have to understand, like, God does everything in these all in decent, all decent and in order. So, just trust the process. Trust the process. Let's have, let me put this up. All right. So, Psalms eighty one fourteen. I sh I should soon have subdued their enemies, and turned my hand against their adversaries. So, God's gonna turn His hand against the adversaries he's going to he's going to subdue them so really then i will subdue their enemies and turn my hand against the adversaries so that that's the amplified version so god he's going to subdue our enemies no worries don't don't worry trust him like when god do it you he gonna do it in a way that is so unexpected that you're gonna be like oh god like he's gonna do it because one, he's gonna do it so unexpectedly and unknowingly because one, he's gonna be glorified. 
in the restoration of your marriage. That indeed he will be. So you have to trust him as you're standing. And so they go to Micah uh, 5 9. Let's go to that one. Thy, thy hand shall be lifted, lift up, up upon thy adversaries, and all thy enemies shall be cut off. That's the, that's the King James Version. So let's go ahead and read the Amplified Version. Your hand will be lifted uh, upon above your adversaries. Oh, your yeah, your hand will be lifted up above your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. So I had to reread that because I thought I was reading it wrong, but I was reading it right. But so here it is. He's saying he's going to cut the enemy off. Like he's showing me, like, look, this is what I'm going to do. I am going to shut the enemy down. I'm going to cut him off where he has no, no way to get a hold of your marriage no more. He's not going to be able to access you no more because I'm going to cut him off. He's going to cause that, that enemy that has rised up against you to, to cease and not exist no more. And so let me go ahead and go to uh, first, first uh, Luke uh, 171. This is going to be the last one. So it's like, all right, it's kind of getting dark in here, so I need, need some more light. All right, so in Luke 71, 71, that we should have say we, we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. So God is telling us, every one of those who had raised their hands up against you, spoken against you, all that that they have been doing towards you and your marriage. God's going to save save your, you, your marriage, your finances, all that the enemy has tried to come up against. That we should have deliverance and be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who, who detest and pursue us with hate. And there you have it. He done told you in so many ways that your enemy is going to be defeated. He's going to be turned away. He's going to be cut off. So do you trust him? Do you trust God? Or are you going to listen to what man say? Or are you going to look at your circumstances? Tell your circumstances how big your God is. He's greater. Because... He's greater than him that is in this earth. He's already defeated him. He's already defeated him. You just have to trust him. And know that he is God. So do not be discouraged. Like Stand with your feet planted. With an unwavering faith. Do not doubt. Keep your faith in God because he's working it. Don't be moved by what you hear, see, or feel because we're the flesh. It's going to be emotional and there's nothing wrong with that. But what I learned to do to where if I even feel myself getting emotional, I just start praising God. I give me some worship music and I just start praising God. And by the time I start doing that, like, it's like, okay, you didn't win this one. <laughs> another one for me and God, another victory. Because I'm at peace again, it's time to keep on doing this thing. And, and that that's that's just how you have to do it. So I, I just thank God for when he, like, shows me things and, and what is going on. I don't look at what's, go like, things that are going on. If I looked at every time I had a court date or Every time my spouse did something or every time my spouse said something or who my spouse is calling or who my spouse is talking to, what my spouse is doing, then I will be an emotional, on an emotional roller coaster and would not be able to control anything. I don't even focus on my spouse. Like I pray for him, but that's it. I go about my day 
Like my relationship is just about me and God. That's all it's about. Me and God all day. Um, when I'm at work, I, um, I work uh, where I, uh, I'm I'm on phones and constantly processing stuff. So when I don't have to be on the phone, if I'm not taking a call or making a call out, I have my worship music on. I might listen to Jesse Duplantis or um, Bill Winston, you know, whoever I feel led to listen to that day. That's that's what I do. I, I, I get faith speaking people in my ear. I need faith because anything else is going to drain you. Even some of the the things that you watch, the, some of the things that you listen to, you have to be careful of what you're allowing in. Just be careful. So with that being said, I, um, I done gave y'all what I had. I, I pray that this is helping y'all and that this is keeping y'all encouraged because this is my walk just as well as is your walk. We all got a stand. Everyone has a different path to take, but everybody outcome is going to be the same. Their marriage is going to be renewed in God. It's going to be restored. It's going to be revived and it will live and not die. So with that point being said, I'm just going to pray again for you. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, praise you for who you are. I thank you for being the Alpha and Omega, the creator of heaven and earth. Lord, I thank you for the mountains that you are moving on behalf of my sisters and brothers. I thank you for dissolving the mountains, Father God, not just moving them, but dissolving them so that they will never rise again, Father God. Thank God Father God, I thank you for, for what you bind in heaven is bound on her earth, Father God. So Father God, we bind the works of the enemy against our marriages and our homes and our finances and in our emotions, Father God. In our, in our way of thinking and even bind them for trying to keep us from hearing and receiving from you. Father God, we bind that those, those, uh, accesses, uh, of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus to us, Father God. And Father God, you said what you loosen in heaven is, is, uh, what was loosened in heaven is loosened on earth. So Father God, I thank you for loosening the hands of the enemy against us. Loosen it right now. Loosen it. Loosen in our husband, uh, the the enemy hand on our our husbands and wives, Father God, on the husbands and in the wives, I should say, Father God. So I thank you for doing that, Father God. I thank you because you said in your word in in Psalms one thirty eight eight, Lord, I thank you for making perfect that which concerns your children marriages father god i thank you for perfect and that which concerns their marriages father god you said that you will fight our battles for us all we have to do is hold our peace father god you said a threefold cord is not easily broken so father god we declare this over all your children marriages and father god i de declare that marriages will be restored by faith father god because we walk by faith and not by sight and father god we will not be moving and even right now lord i thank you for strengthening us and renewing our hearts in you and our minds in you father god so that we feel your love always and that we have your wisdom and walking in your wisdom and your true understanding always father god and father in the name of jesus i just thank you for keeping us covered in in your blood father god our marriages in your blood our children in your blood the spouses in the blood of jesus father god the blood of jesus that was shed on the cross father god we just thank you for your blood and father god i just thank you that even right now we are seeing a turnaround happening lord you're showing us your hand is at work in our marriages, in our homes, and in our spouses' lives, Father God. I thank you for the mountains that you have moved. I thank you for the turnaround. I thank you for breaking the strongholds, Father God. I thank you for the the for for the deliverance of our, our spouses, Father God, and renewing their minds, Father God, so that they can receive you. And I thank you for sending laborers across their path, Lord. And I just thank you that it is well in our lives, and in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So y'all have a blessed rest of y'all week. Stay encouraged. Trust God. I love y'all with the love of God. And I just pray that the Lord to can, continues to keep you and that he continues to give you his wisdom and understanding so that you will not be discouraged in your walk. Y'all be blessed.